It's Seniors Week and uh, we are promoting Walk and Wheel on Wednesdays. We have a neighborhood campaign called Walk and Wheel Friendly Dunbar. For the next few weeks, we are encouraging everyone to get out and walk the neighborhood, walk your shops, walk to school, uh, walk to the community center, just get out there while the weather is good and um, meet your neighbors along the way. And that's the friendly part of it, because when you get out of your cars, and go along the street to nice, have nice conversations. I think the bus itself is a great thing. As we know, this is a regional network going back and forth to UBC, and we all support that. And uh, it also is, the bus is very much used by students, local students, uh, higher levels of elementary school and high schools, and a lot of older adults are also no longer driving and are, are, are big bus users. And so uh, we're trying to promote the fact that uh, one mode of transportation is, of active modes of transportation is very good, but the minute you step off the bus, we all become a pedestrian. And then we need to interact with the sidewalks and the intersections. There are some sections in this area, definitely, where the sidewalk infrastructure um, is, is old and perhaps not up to today's standards. Um, and so I'm sure the city will be looking at that. And today we're just, uh, again, promoting uh, an emphasis on, on uh, people with disabilities and older adults to show how might this affect them and their perceived safety if now there will be large vehicles very close to where they're walking. I'm looking for cracks and, uh, of course, the, the curb cuts, you right, know, because right. they're different all over the city. Like, there could be, this one isn't too bad, but some of them are, you know, this one will be this way and then across the street I'll be in a different place. When I'm downtown, if there's a crowds of people, people wonder where are you going? I, because I have to always watch where my curb cuts are, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think it could be dangerous for pedestrians. I know it's necessary, but you know, I don't know. I think they need to have some neighborhood meetings. I get right across the street here. I'll get on the 41st or the 43rd. Probably every day. Every day? Oh, really? <laughs> Okay. Most days I'm out yeah. uh, and going to appointments or whatever, but yeah, I would say six days out of seven. Marley and any guide dog that is actually going to be quote-unquote guiding in this area is, 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 is not actually finding that. They are finding that part there. That, that actually is not good. It, there's a technical standard for that curb edge to be about that high right there, all the way across there so that I know where the difference is between my sidewalk and my street. If this sidewalk had been designed to the current standard, that white cane tip, which I would call my eyeball, is looking when I walk along here for those marks there consecutively across here, so that when I get to the curb and I go, oh, there's a curb there, I'll step back and I want to find, my cane is going to want to go, now where are those score marks? My eyeball is looking for things so that when I find the score marks, I can use that as my line of direction to cross the street to pick up the other side. So I would say this is an old standard and not ideal for blind and visually impaired people or a person in a wheelchair because the person in the wheelchair is being put into the intersection instead of the crosswalk. And ultimately it's about orientation and line of direction.